Thank you for tuning in to Coppin' with Comic. I'm Brian Coppin, and we're here with comic Alana Michelle Rubin. Alana Michelle Rubin, how the hell are you doing? <gasps> I'm doing great. Oh, thank good. you so much for having oh, me. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. And if people want to see you do stand-up comedy on stage in New York City, where can they uh, find you? What well, shows you have coming up? But also, where can they find you online if they're not so lucky enough to live in the area? Oh, sure. Uh, so I am hosting uh, Lana Schwartz's book release uh, event. Yeah, on... that's coming up. It's 14th? Yes. Union Hall? 14th, Union Hall. Okay. And you're doing a spot? You're hosting or co-hosting? I'm hosting, okay. uh, but we'll have likely comedic bits in between. Yeah. Um, and that's the only one on the docket right now. Okay. Um, but I perform all over, booking and, last minute shows. And, and so they can find you on social. Is it Alana M. Rubin across social platforms? Uh, I think it's Alana Michelle, but my handle is a little bit more, <laughs> more complicated. Okay. It's Alana Soros, but with yes, three R's. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Um, I like to make it very difficult for people <laughs> to find me. <laughs> and then you also have a podcast? I do. Okay. I host the Bop Pod, uh, and it's a music-focused podcast where I invite guests to talk about like the artists that they like and what they mean to them. And, wow. Yeah. It's and what fun. are what are some of your favorite artists? Uh, some of my favorite. Are, I love uh, SZA. I love uh, Meg The Stallion. Yeah. Um, I love Claro, Carly Rae Jepsen. My taste is kind of all over the place. And Rico um, Nasty. She's an. I <laughs> She's like, a little bit dirtier than Megan The yeah. Stanley, right? Yeah. She's a little. I wouldn't or even Stanley, say like. Yeah. More aggressive. Meg is pretty, pretty nasty. Yeah, um, but yeah, Rico's a little, a little aggressive. Yeah, yeah, she's pretty. I, I kind of like that because it's like if you're feeling angry too, like she's a great yeah. outlet to to yeah. seek out. There's a lot of new artists coming down, and I can't tr- keep track of them all. Mm-hmm. But I almost think that the the couple that you mentioned, Megan the St- Stallion, and um, Rico Nasty might be slightly more promising in my eyes than Lizzo. What's yeah. your What's your opinion on that Ooh. hot take? Um, I think Lizzo the, is a different vibe. Like I think they all have this like female empowerment element of it, and not in a way that's like it's like shoved in your face. It's just yeah. like by nature of the music itself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Lizzo's is more like. Mm, maybe Meg is kind of celebratory too, but Lizzo is more romantic to me. Um, and I think like it's more about like yourself and making yourself happy. Okay. And I think Meg is like it's it's improvement of the self, but like it's very much her world. Um, I don't know, but I'm saying all these things, and I'm like, well, I guess they can also apply to each and every one of them. So. <laughs> and then somebody like Claro, like you know, I like the bag song, and she's you know she's fairly popular, and some would say that she's not. She didn't really come out of nowhere, like, that she had extensive backing. And so presenting herself as kind of an amateur act at the beginning seemed a little disingenuous. Is that yeah, correct? Uh, she's someone that I like very, not very recently, but more recently got into. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not fully, I think, like educated on her entire background. But mm. I listened to her latest album and I was just like, it feels like. It's not even sad, but it's just like a very atmospheric and like moody album. And she has some treated vocals in there. Yeah. Where like, like that wasn't, it seemed to be at odds with the single yeah. or with bags or whatever, where she sang very, uh, you know, just normally without heavily processed vocals. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, the, the album wasn't as strong. And somebody like Lana Del Rey, I think Pitchfork named her album like album of the, like the best album and i'm like are you kidding me oh, wow like, like so like yeah so my, my mom used to talk shit about stevie nicks in that she didn't have a vocal range and mm-hmm. i kind of think the same thing applies to lana del rey yeah i don't think she has vocal range at all yeah. it's very like even yeah. even keeled throughout the everything yeah just kind of depressed and melancholic or whatever it is yeah and so she and i think so some of these things are kind of so sh- you know you know it's a little trendy to be into lana del rey as an authentic artist yeah so i must think pitchfork is doing a hot take themselves because now they're owned by Kanye nast yeah so they probably see all these various opportunities to brand the fuck out of it but um some other social trends what which we'll be talking about today is just kind of like these things come out of the woodwork like tiktok or Mm -hmm. visco girls Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and so these are the things we're we're gonna kind of talk about from an observational standpoint Mm -hmm. in that i'm like what the fuck and so (laughs) i'm gonna i'm gonna have alana michelle rubin explain it to me oh my goodness okay and i would probably (laughs) do a horrible job but because you're not you're you're not just loving these trends you are just loving Mm -hmm. to comment on what they mean for culture at large yeah like every obviously i'm not i'm definitely not judging them because every every generation has had their like trends that the previous generation is like 
what is this? All of this is stupid. So I'm not, and there were absolutely things that I'm not entirely disconnected from from my childhood that I <laughs> loved and were my entire world. Which were? Uh, I mean, like, just Spice Girls and, like, celebrity crushes were a huge element. And I don't think that's a trend that ever changes. But, like, I'm trying to think of technology that was different. I mean, uh, AIM, like, Instant Messenger. Yeah. Like, it's It was really when these, like, uh, media tools were coming out when I was getting older. So there wasn't a lot of the same thing um, as, like, it, like, TikTok wasn't around when I was young. And yeah. I can't really... Th- think of an equivalent right now right. other than just like being online all the time and like yeah. being on aim and uh just like oh i guess uh, like uh coloring your profile on aol and like finding all these sites where you can like add cool colorings and like styles yeah. and i mean looking back on that now it's kind of like there was an element of coding to it yeah <laughs> that we didn't realize but something like i think it's just getting so advanced and TikTok is also interesting because for so long, Instagram and, like, Twitter were just, like, it. They were just ruling the social media landscape. And I think they still are, but TikTok does seem to actually be the first contender to maybe, like, risk their their stock <laughs> until they until they sell out to one of those two yeah, one of the four, yeah until they sell, sell out to facebook yeah and then now explain visco girls to me now it's just um they have a series of i don't know fashion signifiers or something like that yeah. that shows yeah i'm trendy but i don't care that much and i don't work that hard like a baggy sweater or something like that <laughs> there are several elements and i i learned about it because uh, on my podcast, I had my friend Elise on, and the conversation just went in that direction. And <laughs> she taught me, she ta- uh, like told me about it, and then I realized that my niece had asked for like several things that make up the aesthetic of <laughs> of Visco Girl, <laughs> and I was like, Oh no, oh, what no, have I done? She's one. That's funny. Yeah, and so basically, you wear baggy t shirts. You have a lot of scrunchies. <laughs> you carry a hydro flask, water bottle, yeah. puka shell necklaces are somehow also relevant <laughs> in this aesthetic. I don't know. Like, the parts are so disconnected that it's, like, yeah. it's so f- interesting to it's me. It's kind of an anti-fashion, like, maybe grunge wear was back in the day. Yeah, okay. and but there's also, like, an element of, like, environmentalism to it, oh. too. So it's got to be sustainable. It's got to yes. be a, a hemp oversized sweater. Yeah, <laughs> hemp oversized and, like, the reusable water bottle. Oh. And there's just... I don't know. And th- I mean, there are also like other identities that, that people are like there's soft, soft girls and then there's e-girls. And I'm not as clear on. The, like, <laughs> I was about to ask, but the, yeah, I, I won't yeah. go there. Right. I think uh, e-girls are. Um, uh, no, I, f- I forget. <laughs> I have like a, a vision of it in my head, but I don't know how to explain okay. it. There are countless YouTube videos on this, though. Oh. So I definitely recommend people researching uh, and just getting lost in that wormhole. Um, yeah, is, I mean, as a comedian, do you think that you could invent your own? Oh. You know, where you just take some bizarre, you know, uh, disparate or, uh, you know, wide ranging influences and try to tie them t- together through something like environmentalism, but not quite. <sighs> I don't you know. know. Like, I this think... will be the the pro choice uh, wardrobe because all these all these <laughs> oh, companies no. actually, you know, you know, just to take a you know a liberal left position yeah. or whatever and promote it via fashion, where you're like, okay, well, each one of these companies uh, do- donate to Emily's list or mm-hmm. whoever's whoever's list is on that liberal left. I mean, I don't know that I would be the person to okay. to do that, okay. but I could I could maybe see it happening, okay. like someone trying to take a stand in that way and and you know kind of creating this like image i think mine would probably just be like promoting emotions and like cool. everybody saying how they feel all the time oh good now and now does that you know promoting emotions say, saying how you feel at the time all, all the time you know at the time and all the time are these things that are making their way into your act mm, like I how definitely... to express emotion is that kind of in your act uh i've definitely addressed um like how we're people are scared to be like alone uh, okay. in my act. I don't know if I've gone so deep as to like talk about how I I feel like everybody should be saying how they feel all the time, but it's definitely I think it's also something I've recently f- like realized that I think about a lot and that I, that I you, think that you wish you could uh, express yourself all the time or that you do. I think I do. I okay. think I have started to whether it's good or bad or ends in like a horrible you know trash fire of of events I think I feel better when I know I've just like said how I feel good 
And yeah, I and I think it took me a long time to get there. And I, but I do think that like people are so like shrouded in nervousness on on like being really honest yeah. and like being vulnerable. And I I don't know. I just feel like maybe life isn't short. I don't know that it is. But I just think it's like a waste of time to be scared. Yeah, because then you're you know if you are kind of cloaking your emotions, you know, because of nervousness, you are not drawing the right people to you. Yeah. It's like if you express yourself at the time and all the time, you are going to drive away the people who shouldn't be around you in the first place yeah. and, and attract certain people to you. Yeah, I and think the, so. And is there anything on stage where you're like, okay, well, this is what, you know, I should have said. And oh. here's what I, you know, what I, sh and I guess this is uh, Berbiglia, you know, mm -hmm. what I should have said was nothing. <laughs> what I did say was X, Y, and Z. Is it yeah. kind of, is it kind of a joke that you will just, um, you shouldn't be as honest as you are, but you know, you just were honest all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, I haven't, I don't know that I've done it on stage yet, but I've definitely written jokes where I've just like said things that maybe I didn't really need to say in specific <laughs> situations. Yeah, because um, how, how do you be honest without being, um, you know, insultingly honest because it's not necessary to, you know, it's not necessary to hurt the person you're being honest to. Like you can, yeah. you can be fairly honest with, um, with the person's feelings in mind. Yeah. I, I think that also depends on who is, you know, uh, adapting to the honesty and like doing that. Um, that person could be just a trash human being yeah, who, exactly. who might need to know. Yeah, exactly. I'm more like, I don't think it's in my nature to be insulting. So I don't, if I'm ever like, if someone ever feels upset by something I said, it's probably just because I felt like I I was being put at risk of like feeling a certain way, and I had to express myself. And yeah. if there, if my honesty, without like any sort of like judgment or or insult, made them feel bad, then it's probably their own issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. And then the other thing you said was, you know, people are afraid to be alone. And what are some of the silly manifestations of people who are acting out because they want to avoid being alone? Is it just, you know, on Tinder, there's certain people who are like, I just want to cuddle and I just want to do this. And they're, they're you know, just so desperate for any sort of affection or attention that they will um, just put out exactly what they want, even if it's... Um, just a little unique. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I don't really remember like specific profiles or anything, but I do know that I'm weary of somebody who just like immediately messages back on an app or right after you match messages back on yeah. an app because I'm just like, I envision them there just like kind of holding <laughs> their phone and just like staring at it and yes. waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> and waiting. And then they're just like, oh, yes, one. And then they like, and, and I suppose for women, that's probably pretty common to get that, uh, you know, quick attention. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't been on the other side of it, so I don't know if, like, there are women that interact that way, but I've definitely encountered it very frequently. But, yeah, yeah dude, but meaning, like, I would just think, like, dudes would just be fairly quick to, yeah. to, to come at you. Yeah, yeah. They, and, and they... Like, it's very see-through, I think. Like, maybe yeah. at first, when I first, like, started doing the apps, I was, like, uh, I sure, like, cool, but then... It, I don't know, it always never actually led to anything. And okay. I was like, I think these people are just looking for, like, momentary kicks. Yeah, so they're almost enjoying the pre-courtship pre, uh, the pre -courtship or something, the courtship it's, without actually meeting. I think it's just, like, they want someone to talk to and, like, give yeah. them the idea that they're not lonely. And so yeah. they're like, okay, immediate conversation. But then it's like you don't know the person, so, like, you have no investment and no, like, incentive to actually – create an encounter it's like you just felt lonely in this moment and you're probably going through something so yeah so it's a little cheap mm -hmm. and is there anything um like that making its way into your act like anything about dating or do oh, you try to stay yeah. away from that okay no no i definitely talk about dating um, what are some of the ridiculous things in dating that you talk about some of the ridiculous things or well, yeah uh, what are you poking fun at or is it poking fun at you know things that you've done i think it's a lot of like how my parents interact with like my love life <laughs> what do they and, do well for a long time are they time, really invested it's like oh did that guy from no, tinder get back to you no. no like they for a very long time they weren't invested at all weren't even interested didn't even like ask any questions <laughs> And Which I is weird, like, right? Well, my older sister has two kids. I feel like that satiated my mom mm. a little bit. Um, and I was just like, okay, but I can like use the pressure a little <laughs> bit. Um, and then recently, my dad is like really cute and awkward and is like trying to set me up with his friend's sons. <laughs> and, and then there was a third option, someone he worked with 
who's not Jewish. So the joke is like, I know they're actually now worried about like the state of my love life because they've presented me with three uh, options. Uh, and one option that. is not Jewish. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that's when you're getting really desperate. Like first they'll haul out the <laughs> Jewish, you know, here's a nice Jewish boy we should set you up with. Yeah. And then they go to the Gentile men. Yes. That's yeah. so funny. And pretty soon they'll be like, now there's a Jewish woman who yeah. we think you should also be dating. Okay, Which they, like, I'm not opposed to. Well, so. Oh good. I mean, it's good, you're, it's good uh, that you have funny characters in your family and do you kind of how can you make your awkward I mean the awkward dad is just adorable and the fact like he tries to set you up and I was like okay well you know he's not exactly what you want he's in this this bizarre career yeah. but we think he's a good boy like do you do any kind of um, I don't know, impressions or voices or character act outs or I definitely I think I do uh, impressions of my mom my mom's okay. Israeli oh, okay. um, so she's more fun to impersonate oh good uh, and she also like I, I, I get kind of nervous of crossing a line of making fun and I don't want to make fun of my mother uh, but she really likes when I do impressions of her and oh, she's good. always just like put that in your improv and I'm like you can't <laughs> plan improv uh, are you also doing improv I don't oh, okay. I don't really she um, calls it improv I love it yeah, yeah they're just any comedy I started with improv and I think they just like don't they don't know the uh, difference maybe yeah um, but yeah I, I, I do impressions of her a little bit because she like I one time asked her like the whole story of her first marriage and like I like to just like know the history of my parents I guess yeah, good, good. weird quirky um but uh and she would just like talk about the the first marriage kind of like the same way that she refers to the first time she tried weed oh. and she just like she says it was a bad experience and, <laughs> that's it. and there's not much else to it but um okay. I try I think I try and look for more opportunities to like uh, talk about them because I just I also like impressions but yeah. I'm, it's, the accent is really good thank you yeah. um, I've been doing it for a very long time <laughs> and, just like in my private life and why'd you switch from improv to to stand up is it because you have a little bit more you know like with improv like I think I went up improv once and it was awful because you're relying on you know your teammates who mm -hmm. also really have an incentive to get in the spotlight and kind of hog it um, yeah and so why did you kind of switch from improv to stand up um, I think because with him, uh, honestly, I, I never felt that good at improv. Okay. Um, and I didn't like the fact that you had to rely on several people to like get a practice going or to uh, do shows. Yeah. And I think I just got very burnt out on it. And with stand up, I just have more control. And I'm not, I could be more consistent. I could always be more consistent, but. It, at least, like, I have the responsibility at the end of the day, and if yeah. I want to make a change, that's entirely up to me. Okay. And it's just and, – and I can cater the material, and I can plan ahead, and if there's something specific I want to talk about, I know I have the power to do that. Yeah. Whereas improv is not really – I mean, it could be therapeutic in the sense that you're just making stuff up and you don't have to think about real life, but it's – if you're a person who kind of feels better actually discussing things, then I think stand-up is – the best way to go. Yeah, some things of substance, you know, even mm -hmm. like the thing about, you know, any dating things and, um, you know, the cheap interaction on Tinder and, um, you know, just being, um, you know, being able to express emotions at the time all the time is really something that I would remember from your act. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice Thank that you. you're talking about substantive things. And will you be talking about that on the 14th at Union Hall? That's I'm a little bit at the whim of Lana because she's really planning the show and it's for her book release. So yeah. I'm and it's called Build Your Own Romantic Comedy. Yes, okay. Build Your Own Romantic Comedy. I read it. It's really good. Everybody oh, good. should pre-order it. I love that idea where you get it's almost like a choose your own adventure. Yes. And yeah. You can, yeah. Through these formulas that are romantic comedies, you are building your own romantic comedy. Yeah. I love that. And it's extremely impressive. And like she is the person to write this book. Like and so yeah. So if you wrote the if you wrote a book, what would you know if she's the person to to write that book what's the book that you're the person to write I would write probably like a fan fiction hip hop novel <laughs> is your Twitter thing for, do, you, do you tweet about Drake ever Pro oh yeah I Drake should have mentioned him earlier <laughs> he's like the person but I think I, I feel like I'm I'm conflicted about him because like there have you know I don't know I I really love him and but I think like as I get older like the the allure is kind of fading and like I I don't know. I don't the the I think the media does exaggerate and I don't really know the situation between like the Millie Bobby Brown stuff. Yeah. But there are like some other signs in his behavior that are very questionable. So I don't know how much I like how good it is to still verbally endorse him, but like yeah. 
But it's I, so funny to see you tweet about him, and that's yeah. what would be in your fan fiction Absolutely. of hip hop, right? For sure, for sure. Yeah. And I, I guess he's been around long enough. Where if anybody's been around long enough and is that rich and that famous and that critically heralded, mm-hmm. that there's going to be some questionable interactions. That, yeah. That you know, it's cool that he no longer has the Alana Michelle Rubin <laughs> just blank check endorsement. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. And I, then when's your podcast drop? Uh, the and what's next it called? season. So it's called the Bop Pod. Oh right. right. And the next season starts February. February 2nd. Okay, and they, they find that everywhere great podcasts mm-hmm. are. Yes, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. I believe there's an Amazon podcast app that it's also uh. on, I think. Um, but yeah, you can find it there. And we have a, a whole first season of episodes, too, so people can listen to that. And okay. it's really, it's I, I love it a lot. Um, and I just like asking people about who they like listening to and where they heard them for the first time and just like all that stuff. That really sounds cool. And then you know, they can find you at Alanasaurus on one of the social platforms, but the other ones might be a, a, They're a, all Alana, the same. Alana Michelle. They're, well, I think if you search my full name, I'll be on there, but okay. the handle is Alanasaurus, oh, cool. I-L-A-N-A-S-A-U-R-R-R-U-S. <laughs> There's a lot of R. She likes to fuck with. Yeah. yeah she likes to be I'm difficult so to find. sorry. <laughs> but, um, and then the show coming up is on the 14th, February 14th, Union Hall, mm-hmm. and they can find you you know other shows that you're doing on Alana Soros with a bunch of R's. Yes, yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, Alana Michelle Rubin. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Bye-bye.